Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this we're going to the video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be discussing, first of all, a uTorrent and a security bug, which enables attackers to take control of your machine and execute code. Not too great. Then we're going to move over to SIM cards, because the traditional SIM card that we know and love may soon be a thing of the past as we look towards integrated SIM cards. We'll move We'll go to that in just a second. And then we'll finish the video with Tesla because they have had their cloud resources hacked and have been used for, wait for it, that's right, crypto mining. But first things first, a um, little bit of channel news. Yes, I'm still using a different microphone at the moment. Uh, AIM is absolutely still destroyed. Although tomorrow I have an interview which is going to be really cool uh, for the security minded amongst you. It's with a security specialist company so that's going to be absolutely amazing it's about an hour an hour and a half that they've penciled in for me so uh, hopefully that's going to be taking place tomorrow assuming there's no like major issues with their scheduling and then i'll proceed to edit that over the next couple of days and i've also gotten word that there's going to be a couple of other really awesome interviews popping up over the next several days as well as well as a games developer conference that i just attended in london a few days ago so I'm hopefully going to finish the editing of that on the weekend. But with that said, let's start out with uTorrent. Because there is a vulnerability, and it's not a particularly good one. It's not sharing its feelings with you. Instead, it allows a attacker to take control of your machine and execute code, which is never exactly a good sign. So a Google Project Zero researcher by the name of Tavis Ormandy, who is becoming synonymous with finding security-related bugs, has discovered these exploits. So, how do they occur and what can you do? Well, on the bugs.chromium.org website, I'll read this verbatim so there's no ambiguity. By default, uTorrent creates a HTTP RPC server on port 10,000 uTorrent Classic or 19.5.75 on uTorrent Web. There are numerous problems with these RPC servers that can be exploited by any website using an XML HTTP request, excuse me, HTML HTTP request. To be clear, visiting any website is enough to compromise these applications. So how did he test this? Well, what he did is create a Windows 7 virtual machine. Um, it's a fresh install, just to clarify. He installed uTorrent 3.5 and accepted all the default settings. When file add torrent uh, entered a certain URL, when the torrent is finished, it's only about five megabytes, he visited a certain URL. And then after that, clicked Start Attack, wait a few minutes, and according to him, the page should have figured out the size and file type and give you options to steal the files Some screenshots are attached. So the best case scenario, if you can say something like this is best case, is because it is very easy to exploit this, is you can simply snoop a target's download history. Now that bug impacts both uTorrent Web and also the uTorrent Classic. However, it's also noted that uTorrent Web is worse because with uTorrent Web, you can also download malware on the target computer and change the default download folder. So something like a startup folder is used to actually uh, essentially become loaded on system boot up. So in other words, the malware is automatically loaded as your system uh, restarts. So what can you do about this? Well, BitTorrent has not fixed the issue after 90 days, but they claim that it has been resolved in a beta. So my advice to you, assuming you are using a BitTorrent client, which happens to be uTorrent, would be to download the beta version. And the fixed version would be 3.5.3.44352. So you can go ahead and download the very latest beta and go ahead and basically hope for the best. There is no mitigation advice available. So, so far there is no user fix available for this. So you basically have to just hope that that version has fixed all of the issues. And obviously if you're very security conscious, perhaps it would be best to, let's say, run this on a virtual machine or perhaps even on a separate machine if you have that available to you. Now, let's begin with cell phones. Because, my friends, size does matter. An arm are definitely the leading voice into this. Because, let's face it, when you have a device like a cell phone, 
there's an awful lot of technology which is crammed into a space which is absolutely tiny. If you've ever seen a cell phone taken apart, if you've seen, let's say, even a Nintendo Switch taken apart, you can just, you can empathize with how much the designers must have had to scrimp and save for every square millimeter. Hell, 0.5, 0.2 millimeters of space. Not only have you got the battery, the screen, the various components, you know, flashcards and whatever else you can cram in there. And of course, it has to be, you know, still a fairly aesthetically pleasing design and also with certain weight criteria and all the other bits and pieces. So, traditionally, a SIM card, a nano SIM, just to clarify, is about 12.5 by 9 mm, to be exact, it's 12.3 by 8.88 mm in size. But then you also need to take into account the hardware which actually holds those SIMs. So ARM are telling us that iSIM is the answer because it will take up just a fraction of a millimeter square and it will be built right on to the processor itself. Now there is already another SIM alternative and it is known as the eSIM and it is 6x5 mm so it's still considerably smaller, just a little less than half the size of the current nano sim but it hasn't gained a lot of traction in the industry but it is popular with the pixel smartphones from google and it is also popular with uh, wearables because well obviously size is kind of an issue there now there is one obvious issue with this and that is that you as an end user also have a lot less freedom so currently, what can you do if you dislike the current SIM that you have? Well, by golly gosh, you can simply replace it, right? Not too difficult. This won't be obviously the case here. I mean, unless you're one of the best soldiers in the world, hint, you know, most of this stuff, of course, is done autonomously, but you're not going to be able to simply re-solder in a new processor. Therefore, carriers might be willing to adopt this because ultimately it's more likely to just keep to their networks and help retain customers but ultimately it's down to the decisions of the chip manufacturers and the phone providers as well as of course the networks because arm while they do provide the basic design they don't make the chips themselves they're just essentially i guess licensing the technology would be the simplest way to explain it so on from one subject to something very very different Tesla has been infected by crypto mining malware. And what hackers have done, by the way, the security firm Redlock were the ones who actually um, discovered this and revealed it. And they published a report on Tuesday, which would have been February the 20th, 2018, just for clarification's sake. And they say that the breach is very similar to Gemelto, and they are the world's biggest SIM card manufacturer, as well as an insurance company, Aviva. So how did this breach occur? Well, the initial entry point, according to the security researchers, was from an administrative console, which was not secured correctly uh, by Kubernetes, which is an open source package, and it's used to deploy a large number of cloud-based applications and resources. And apparently, according to the Redlock researcher, it literally was not password protected. And within one Kubernetes pod, access credentials were exposed to Tesla's AWS environment, that's Amazon Web Services environment, which contained an Amazon S3, that's a simple storage service bucket, that has sensitive data such as telemetry. Now, most people would then assume that what the attackers did was leverage every single drop of resources it could muster to start mining right to start mining cryptocurrency bitcoin they decided that would not be the smartest way to go instead what they did was use lower amounts of resources now you might say why why would they do that well i'm sure some of you are probably already uh, you know jumping up and down with the answer and it's very simple it lowers the chances that a system administrator is going to notice that hang on there's something wrong here after all a couple of percent, 5, 10, 15 percent of CPU usage. Okay, you can kind of say, okay, you know what, I don't have time to investigate. I'll look at that at some other time. Maybe something just needs to be optimized. When it's like 90 or 100 percent CPU usage over a long period of time, though, on the graph, you're going to think, okay, that, that's probably a bit wrong. What's going on? In an email, a representative from Tesla said, 
We maintain a bug bounty program to encourage this type of research, and we address this vulnerability within hours of learning about it. The impact seems to be limited to internally used engineering test cars only, and our initial investigation found no indication of customer privacy or vehicle safety or security was compromised in any way, end quote. So not only did they, uh, and refer, of course, to the attackers here, run the mining malware, but also they did manage to get certain telemetry information from Tesla automotive cars, which would not be so great, but it could have also been a lot worse, quite frankly, um, you know. I'm not saying that this is the best scenario by any stretch of the imagination, but at least it wasn't like, you know, design documents or business plans or customer data or whatever. I'm sure someone is getting raked quite literally over coals at this point, but ultimately, large companies, there's going to always be a hiccup. Um, and quite honestly, we're going to see this happen an awful lot more. With all of that said, Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.